In this video, I'll talk about cloud computing characteristics. There are a number of characteristics that must be in place in order to have a cloud computing environment. According to ISO IEC publication 17788, the characteristics, of which there are six, include broad network access, on-demand self-service, multi-tenant capability, resource pooling, rapid elasticity and scalability, and finally, measured service. Let's dive into each of these in more detail. Broad network access means that cloud services are available over a network such as the internet, or in the case of a private cloud, it could be a local area network. And they can be accessed through standard mechanisms, whether we're using a mobile phone, a laptop, a desktop, running the Linux or Windows operating systems, it doesn't matter. Another aspect of broad network access is that the network access to the IT service is accessible via a low cost, ideally using a high broadband communication link. The next characteristic is on-demand self-service. This means that cloud service customers can provision additional computing capabilities as needed. For example, in the case of using email in the cloud, an organization could very quickly provision new email accounts for new employees that get hired without worrying about ordering a server or acquiring additional licenses and so on. Another key aspect to on-demand self-service is that consumers can provision the resources that they need, whether it be email, storage space, virtual machine instances, database instances, and so on, without first going through the cloud service provider. Often the cloud service provider will have a web-based portal through which customers can provision new resources as they need them. The other thing about on-demand and self-service is that billing is usually on a monthly basis via a monthly subscription fee and also based on pay for what you use, much like electricity or water. Cloud service providers that offer this type of on-demand self-service include Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, Google, IBM, and Salesforce. Here on the Amazon Web Services page, once a customer has signed into their account, all of the various cloud services offered by the provider are available, and the cloud customer can provision them as needed without talking first to the cloud service provider. Now, of course, depending upon the service that the customer provisions, they may incur additional charges. For example, I could click here on EC2 to launch new virtual server instances in the cloud, or I could make a new S3 storage bucket for storing data in the cloud, and so on. So it's done on demand and it's self-service because the customer decides when they want to scale up with it or scale down if they want to deprovision those resources. The next cloud computing characteristic is multi-tenancy. This allows multiple customers to share the same applications or the same physical infrastructure However, there is isolation kept between those customers. For example, multiple customers might use the same email service in the cloud, but each tenant or cloud customer might have a different instance of that application where they have their own customized settings, their own mailboxes, and so on. Client data isolation is a major security concern for multi-tenant application services. So there are ways that this can be done even at the customer level where they could provision their own virtual networks in the cloud, they could enable encryption at the network or storage level, and so on. Another characteristic that identifies cloud computing is resource pooling. This means that multiple customers are serviced from the same physical resources. So the cloud provider would have much equipment in way of network infrastructure, server computing power, physical disk storage, and so on. However, at the software level, this gets provisioned accordingly as customers provision these types of resources. The resource pool should be very large and flexible enough to service multiple client requirements and to provide for economy of scale. And that gets passed on to the cloud customer often where they only pay for what they use and it's a cheap operational cost compared to a fixed capital cost if they were to buy their own equipment and store it on-premise. 
When it comes to resource pooling, resource allocation must not impact application performance. Also, resources can be located at multiple geographical locations. In some cases, customers can be permitted to select the resource location themselves. Many cloud providers will even replicate information between regions for high availability. Here in Amazon Web Services, I can launch a new virtual server instance in the cloud. I'll just choose one of the templates and I'll accept the first set of defaults. On step three of launching a new instance, this is where I have a number of interesting options, such as determining exactly where I want this to be available. For example, geographically, I can have this virtual server instance provisioned in the US West 2A region, 2B, 2C, and so on. At the same time, further down below, for tenancy, I can choose from shared tenancy, that's multi-tenant hardware, or dedicated tenancy, single tenant hardware, hardware that is actually dedicated to a single cloud customer or tenant, which would incur additional charges. Rapid elasticity and scalability is a key feature of cloud computing. This is the cloud service's ability to expand or contract as the user decides that they need additional compute resources, or it could be automated. Now, if you compare this to what we used to do previously, which would be to order hardware for computing, physically wait for it to be shipped. Once it arrives, unbox it, set it up, install an operating system, patch it, configure it, and so on. That takes a lot longer than simply provisioning or deprovisioning resources as you need them in the cloud. Resource provisioning in the cloud can be automated based on triggers or operational parameters that users can configure. At any point in time, applications and features will only consume required capacity on a needs basis. The last characteristic is measured service. This means that cloud resource usage, whether it's virtual server instances that are running or storage in the cloud, all of this usage gets monitored by the cloud service provider. Then it gets reported. The cost of consumption is based on the utilization of those individual resources. So the cost model is based on pay for what you use. Many cloud providers will provide a web interface whereby at any point in time, you can see how much your monthly bill is currently based on the cloud resources that you've been using. Often they'll also have a projected forecast value based on your current usage and also a breakdown on the specific cloud services that you were using that happened to have incurred these charges. In this video, we discussed cloud computing characteristics.